Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to send data from the Raspberry Pi Pico W to Azure IoT Hub in MicroPython. Now, Azure IoT Hub is a powerful way to build Internet of Things applications to store, process, and visualize sensor data. We'll be using a real sensor to send environmental data in this tutorial. We'll go through the Azure IoT setup, the connections we need with the sensor, and go over the code, which I'm giving to you for free on Shilatech.com. Now, this is just the beginning of Azure videos I'm going to do on this channel. So like the video and stick around and subscribe if you want to see more regarding Azure and also stick around as well if you're just into IoT topics because there are plenty of other topics unrelated to Azure on this channel such as AWS tutorials, Arduino and much more. Now let's get started and talk about what we need to do on the Azure side of things to set up our IoT hub. Okay so first things first we just want to go to our portal on azure.com so make sure you have an Azure account. They do give you free credits to get started that's what I'm using right now so you see I have some remaining credit here for the service and we could just go to the IoT hub if you don't see it here on this section you can go ahead and and just search on the top so i'm just going to go ahead and select iot hub and we're going to create a hub so we can click that create button and then we can create a resource group so just go ahead and create a new one we can name it what we like so we'll call it raspberry pi group and then we could just call this pico w hub and then we can go ahead and review and create this so that is fine this iot hub is not available so let's just do pico w hub 2 it's okay and review and create so it looks like it's giving us some pricing stuff and i don't know why it's showing me error again okay pico hub let's do 22 maybe that's not taken okay looks like that's good review and create just giving us some pricing information there and then we can go ahead and create and it will take a moment so give a few minutes for it to actually create this hub okay so now that our pico w hub 22 is created we can just go to the resource itself and then we just want to go to the left side menu here and we want to go to devices. So we want to create a device that'll be our Pico W today. We can go to add device and then we could just give it a device ID so we can call it Pico W1 and we could just leave everything as is. Go ahead and save. And then once we have this device, just give it a moment there and eventually it will show in this devices list. Let me go ahead and refresh this. Sometimes it does take a bit for some reason. I don't know why and looks like our device is showing successfully okay so now that we have our device created in azure the next thing we want to do is we want to generate a sas token because we'll need this for our request to azure to be able to actually send data or else it will reject our request in order to do that we're going to use the azure cli which is just a command line interface that allows us to run commands to manage our azure resources now they have all the instructions to install this cli depending on your operating system i went ahead and installed it on mac os so depending on yours whether you're using windows linux or something else you can go ahead and install it per their instructions and once you have it installed we just want to go to a terminal or a command line on our machine and we're just going to type this command here so that is az iot hub generate sas token and the hub name in this case is my pico w 22 and we're going to give it a device id which is the device we just created and we're going to give it a duration now i'm just going to do i believe that's one hour and that will be enough for this tutorial series so we're just going to do one hour and we can go ahead and click enter and it will generate a token for us unable to find my iot at my pico w hub 22 now i think maybe what did i oh pico w hub okay so i named it so pico w hub 22 sorry about that let's go ahead and do this and it should generate a token accordingly so once we have this, go ahead and save this SAS token. We'll be using it in the code, so we'll just keep on the side for now. Next, let's talk about the connections we need for the sensor because we'll be using a real sensor today to send environmental data. Okay, so in order to use the sensor today, it's very easy. We just have to take our BME280 environmental sensor. I have the link for that sensor in the description down below. Really, you don't have to use a BME280 if you want to use another sensor to send your own data and massage the code as need be, you can do that. But we're going to use a BME280 today and we're going to use that in future Azure tutorials as well. So if you want to stick along to this Azure tutorial series on this channel, I suggest you just get a BME280. They are cheap. And once you have your BME280, you want to take four jumper wires, as you see here. So only four connections and connect it to the Pico W like this. Now I am using a breadboard. That's just for organization purposes. You don't have to use a breadboard. You can connect it directly to the Pico W. As long as you have the pins attached to the Pico W, you can do that. And these are all the connections we need. So just SCL and SDA to send 
data. So that's what actually sends the signals from the device. And we have VIN, which is just the power. So we're going to connect that to power on the Pico W. And then we're just going to connect the ground to ground on the Pico W. And that's all you need for the sensor connections. So now you can plug your Pico W in and let's get coding on this device to actually send the data. Okay, so jumping into MicroPython side of things, we're just going to be using one simple script today and I'll be coding it using Thani. Once again, the script is available to you for free on chillatech.com in the description down below. So go ahead and visit that if you do not feel like copying all of this code in. So I'm just going to go over this code at a high level. It's fairly simple. So simply what we have here are some imports. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put our Wi-Fi credentials. Now, I just saved my Wi-Fi password in a constants file. You do not have to do this. So you can go ahead and delete this and just put your raw internet password because we need internet to send data over the internet to the IoT hub. Then we're just going to pass our hub name and device ID, which we created in the first step. And these are the headers. So that token we saved that we got from the Azure CLI, you can just go ahead and paste that full token here. And down below, we just have this URL, nothing to change there. That's just going to sub in your IoT hub name and your device ID. Now we just have some helper functions here. So connect Wi-Fi helper function. We have get ISO timestamp helper function. So this just gets a timestamp. We'll be using that in future tutorials to actually visualize this data over time. And then we're just going to make the connection to the BME280. So with the BME280, you're actually going to need a BME280 library. Now this library you can get from the description down below. It's just a Python file. And you could just go ahead and take that Python file and save it in your main directory of your Pico W. So you see I have my BME280.py here. And this is just a Python file that is on shillatech.com. It's a library created by Peter uh, Dahlberg in 2016. So thanks to him, we can easily interact with the BME280 and MicroPython. And then finally, we just have this code, which gets the BME280 values. So it does some rounding, creates a payload, and then it sends the payload with urrequest.post with the corresponding URL headers and the, the JSON. So that's what we're going to do here. So we do that every five seconds, as you see in the while loop after we connect to the internet. And I'm just going to run this code and show you that we're going to get no module name constants. Okay, that is, uh, I think, because I'm running it in the wrong directory. So let's go here. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, yeah, so constants was in the wrong directory. I just moved it and I just moved it to my home directory. So now we can go ahead and run this code. Sorry about that. Once again, you do not need the constants. I added a comment here. You do not need that. So you can just pass in your raw Wi-Fi password. Go ahead and click play there. And once it is done, you should see a response code of 204. So it looks like it's sending it and we can see the payload it is sending, which we'll visualize in a future tutorial. Now let's revisit the IoT Hub and make sure we are getting data pinged to the, to the hub we created. Okay, so now that our messages are being sent in the code and we're getting that 204 status, we can go to the Pico W hub that we created. We can go to the left, go to metrics, and we can go type in the metric we want to see, and that is telemetry messages sent. And we could see that the IoT hub is receiving those messages. So it looks like we are finally able to transmit data from our Pico W to Azure IoT hub successfully. So that sums it up for today's short tutorial. I hope you got the gist of it and you are able to send data from your Pico W to Azure IoT. Once again, many more powerful things that we can do with this platform, such as visualizing multi-dimensional data, performing post-processing, and several other operations we can perform. If you want to see more of that, let me know in the comment section down below. And once again, be sure to subscribe to the channel to stick around for more Azure and other IoT tutorials. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section, and I will see you guys next time.